has been an important part of my life since I was a kid. I was making little edits to songs at age 6 and writing them completely at 12. While life took me in a different direction than music, the direction I ended up going in, math, equipped me to dig into this sort of thing and understand their inner workings. Today, I want to explore one of the stranger facts that comes from this sort of investigation, and that is that we can hear fractions. First things first, we need an instrument. Pianos, though beautiful, are way too complicated. Even clarinets have a lot going on with them. But that does lead us to something incredibly simple, the tube. The longer a tube is, the lower the pitch goes. The opposite is true too. The shorter it is, the higher the pitch goes. In fact, the one thing we know for sure is that if you cut the length in half, you will go up an octave. We'll talk more about that later though. I want to make a big sound, so I'm going to get some big tubes. This is 3 inch PVC pipe, and we can cut it to various lengths to get different potential notes. The question is, how should I cut them? To answer this, we're going to have to work out the fractions we want to use, and to do that, we need to know how to multiply fractions and whole numbers. A fraction has two main parts, a numerator and a denominator. The numerator goes on top, and the denominator goes on bottom. A fraction is exactly what it sounds like. It's a part of something. Understanding this helps visualize fractions. The denominator tells you what the size of the fractions are, and the numerator tells you how many pieces you have that are of that size. Let's see a few quick examples. Consider 5 eighths. The size of the pieces are eighths. That is, break up a whole into eight pieces. The number of pieces you have is 5, so we'll highlight those like this. Now, consider 11 eighths. The size of the pieces stayed the same, but now we have 11 of them, which is 1 and 3 eighths. Written as 11 eighths, we call this an improper fraction, contrasted with 5 eighths, which is a proper fraction. Written as 1 and 3 eighths, we call this a mixed number, because it mixes whole numbers and fractions. Which way we write the fraction will depend on what we're doing. Improper fractions tend to make the math computations easier, whereas mixed numbers tend to make the results easier to understand. The only other detail is simplification. Let's consider 2 fourths. While it's true we can write this as 2 over 4, and it's correct, I can't help but notice that this is also 1 half. Carrying out this observation is called simplification, that is, we simplify this fraction. This is usually how we write our answers, who wants unnecessary complication. Put a pin in this, we'll come back to simplification in a bit. Now let's learn how to use these fractions. If I want to multiply a whole number and a fraction, say 2 times 3 sevenths, then all we do is multiply 2 times the numerator, giving us 6. The answer then is 6 sevenths. There's no simplification that can happen here, and this is a proper fraction, so this is our answer. The process for multiplying a fraction by a fraction is only slightly more complicated, but we'll save that for another time. Let's figure out the lengths of the pipes we need. Let's start with a bunch of virtual pipes. We know that halving the length of one will make the sound you get from it go up an octave. The way we say this in mathematics is that its length is being divided by two. What we want to do is to build a pleasant sounding chord between these high and low notes here. But how? Well, let's think about this like a mathematician. That is, let's try to make a pattern. We started by dividing by two. So what if we divided by three or four or five? Cool, we could definitely cut these pipes and see what it sounds like, but there's one little wrinkle I want to work out first. Remember, we want to find notes between the high and low notes. The pipes we just made will be too short. Let's fix them one at a time, starting with a one-third pipe. Remember that if we double the length of a pipe, we get the same note, but at a different octave. So with that in mind, let's double the one-third pipe, giving us two-thirds. Great, this works. Next, let's look at the one-fourth pipe. Doubling its length gives us two-fourths, but we see that it's now the same length as the one-half pipe, which makes sense, because two-quarters is the same thing as one-half. Since we already have that note, let's try tripling the original length, giving us three-quarters. It won't be the same note. We didn't double it, we tripled it. But I think that's a good thing, because maybe that will be a new note in our chord. Lastly, let's look at the one-fifth pipe. Doubling its length isn't enough. It's still too short, but tripling it gets us where we want. We say that this fraction is three-fifths. 
You may note, though, that we could also quadruple it, and that will also give us a new note. That fraction is called four-fifths. Great. Now, I don't know which pipe is going to make which note, but at least we have a plan. Let's head back to the shop and do some cuts. What I'm doing here is taking some basic 2x4s I got from the store and cutting them to build a frame for the pipes. This way, once I've figured out the lengths of the pipes, we can just set them here and see what sounds we get. But in order to do that, we're going to need to work out how long we want the pipes to be based on those fractions. To begin with, the pipe is 10 feet long, but I want to do my math in inches because that's what my tape measure does, and pretty handily too. Because there are 12 inches in a foot and we have 10 feet, we know that each pipe is 120 inches. In order to figure out the length of each pipe we're going to cut, we will multiply the length of the pipe by the fraction we want. We have five fractions here, well, six technically, but the longest pipe we want is 120 inches, so we don't have to do any math there, so we really just have five. Let's pick the easiest one first. To multiply a whole number by a fraction, we do the same as we did earlier. We multiply the number by the numerator of the fraction. In this case, the numerator is 1, so this multiplication gives us 120 over 2. This time, however, we do need to simplify the fraction to give us our final answer. Why? Well, let's look at this in two ways. First, let's do so graphically. 120 halves looks like this. But notice how I can pair these up like so. This looks like 60 wholes. So let's just say it that way, 60. But how did I know to look for that? Certainly, it's impractical to draw this out every time we need to check for simplification. The answer is that 120 is divisible by 2. If you divide 120 by 2, you get 60. This is the other way of looking at it. We are literally carrying out a division here. We call this the fraction bar, and as you can see, it really means to divide. The other fractions come out the same way, and here's what you get if you carry out that process. We have, for our pipe lengths, 120 inches, 96 inches, 90 inches, 80 inches, 72 inches, and 60 inches. Let's cut them and set them up. I laid them out, labeled and marked them, and cut them to length. Let's go ahead and see how they sound. Okay, sounds good to me. So the high and low notes are both A. We've also got some notes between. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, you can actually hear some of these fractions. And by that, listen to this chord. That's what we would normally call in Western music a major chord. That is one, a half, two thirds, and four fifths. That is really cool. We can actually hear the fractions involved in those chords. Now, when you dig deep into this and you actually go to do something like make a piano, we're gonna change a little bit from this pure fraction setup, but it's still basically the same idea. What's really interesting is that we have a couple of other notes in here as well. Neither of those two notes, the three-fourths or the three-fifths, are in the major chord, but they are still in the scale. There's a lot to unpack here and refinements that could obviously be made. If this is something that you want to try and you don't want to go through all the hassle of getting a whole bunch of PVC pipes and building a frame, then grab some straws, do some measurements, multiply some fractions, and go to town. This is really just the tip of the iceberg. We didn't build an entire scale there are more notes we could make. In fact, if you look at a piano, we have 12 notes per octave, but why stop there? There's even more that we could make. What do you do once you get these notes? There's all sorts of scales that you could then play on it. The connections between music and math are much deeper than I've been able to express here. If you do end up trying to do an exploration with straws, I really encourage you to try some new stuff, try to extend something we did here, maybe how we found fractions, and see what you can come up with. Because in music, as in life, there's many different right answers. I'm Derek Taylor from the Taylor Series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. If you really like the video, come on over to our Patreon page where you can get involved and see all the cool stuff we're doing.